Hi there, this is Heather of Shutterbug 101. Today I'll be going over the Canon Rebel T8i and its kit lens, the 18 to 55. Let's get started. The Canon T8i is a 24 megapixel crop sensor DSLR camera that has 45 focus points, a fully articulating 3 inch touch LCD screen, and has a continuous drive of 7.5 frames per second. This camera can shoot 4K video up to 25 frames, a microphone port, and wireless abilities that work with the Canon utility app. Today we will be discussing the doors, buttons, and menus to help you navigate this camera a little easier. So going over the T8i, the Rebel series, just so you know, is going to be Canon's introductory line. So this is naturally going to be the most popular seller by far for Canon uh, because not only is it a very simple overlay, easy to learn, easy to work with, highly supported, it also takes amazing pictures for what it is. Now, when I say, oh, this is their beginner line, believe me when they don't skimp out on the quality. Me, myself, being a photographer for about 15 years, I actually shot with a Canon Rebel for about 10 of those. For nearly a decade, I learned on a Canon Rebel. So it, the Rebel series will get you excellent quality. It's easy to learn. And as you'll find out as we go through this camera, it has a lot to offer and a very simple overlay. So we'll start with the front of the camera here. As you can see, we have our name up front. We do have the button right here that's going to allow us to take the lens on and off. You can have interchangeable lenses with this camera. You'll wanna make sure that when you have the lens off the camera that you have the face downward until you can get the lens put back on. Because if any dirt or debris falls in here and gets past the mirror, you'll get spots on your image. So you wanna make sure that you're taking very good care of your camera, you're not just leaving it out like this as you go and find your other lens. And of course, to put your lens back on, this one here has a white square. Some of them have a red dot if it's a EF rather than a EFS lens. You're gonna line it up with that symbol. You're gonna turn and click into place and it will be seated there for you. I wanted to go over this camera with the kit lens so you can see what the basic kit is capable of. Of course, different lenses will offer you different things. So if you're looking to do a comparison of lenses, let me know if there's one I haven't featured for you yet that you're expressing inspiration in or check out my camera basics playlist in general because I do have one on there that will explain you know, in a very basic way which lens would be better for which situation if you're looking to upgrade this lens. Uh, but this lens here is going to be an 18 to 55, is going to be a wide angle to mid range lens, something to get you started. Uh, it does have two switches on the lens here. You have your autofocus and manual focus there, and this is gonna be your manual focus ring. And then of course you have a stabilizer in this lens as well. You typically want to keep your stabilizer on unless you are on a tripod. In this case, you will turn it off because now the tripod is doing the stabilizing for you. And we'll go to the side of the camera here. You can see here we just have one door, which is going to be for our SD card. This camera does take a SD card that is UHS-1 compatible. Uh, and it actually shows you on the door here what direction to put the card in. As you can see, there's a little corner cut off. So you just wanna make sure that that matches the picture before you put it into the camera. This is also spring loaded, so please do not try and pry it up. You wanna push down before you pull it out. On this side of the camera here, you can see that we have a couple doors. In this door here, you're going to find our shutter release cable, which is sold separately. So you can do long exposures, uh, basically using a corded remote. You also have a mic port here, so you can use an external microphone as, you know, the microphone on these cameras are okay. They do capture sound, but if you wanted to get high quality sound, want to capture a specific person talking, you definitely want to get a uh, microphone from there. In this door here, we have our microphone port, which is uh, micro USB. This is specifically for updating the firmware 
or transferring your pictures and videos from camera to your computer, this does not charge in body. You need to have an external charger, which does come with the camera itself. You also have an HDMI out port here as well, so you can use this with an external screen, a television to show pictures that you've already taken, do a slideshow, that type of thing. On the top of the camera here, you can see that uh, here's where the sound will play from when you play back a video. These two ports here are going to be the built-in microphone that's going to take in the sound. This flash, it doesn't pop up on its own. You actually lift it or close it. Uh, depending if you would like to use it or not, which I like that option much better. Any of the older versions of the Rebels, this would automatically pop up anytime that you were on your automatic mode and it felt that it needed a flash. Um, so at least there you get the option, which is really nice. This is a hot shoe here, which you can put an external flash on. The thing with these built-in flashes here is it goes one direction toward your subject. If you're taking pictures of people, we've all been there where there's this bright flash and you're like, oh gosh, my eyes. The great thing about an external flash is if you are going to be taking pictures of people or doing portraiture work, is you can tilt the head on it. So if you're taking pictures indoors, you can bounce it ceilings or walls to be able to get a more diffuse natural light or even adding a diffuser on it like the mag mod that i've displayed in other videos we have our shutter button here which you push halfway down to focus push all the way down to take a picture we have an adjustment knob here which will adjust shutter speed aperture depending on what mode you're on on your mode dial this is going to be our power switch here you have off you have on you also have video mode as well. So in order to do video, you do need to be in the video mode. And to record with video, you're just going to hit this button that's by the red dot here. Press once to start recording, press again to stop recording. If you are in simply your on mode for pictures, and we extend our articulating screen here, and you do happen to push this button, it's actually going to be giving you a live view on the screen rather than recording video. So something to keep in mind. On the top of the camera here, before we go over the shortcut buttons, we're gonna go ahead and go over our mode dial. So the green A mode is going to be your automatic mode. This is going to let the camera take full control over your pictures and what settings it thinks it needs to use. Now, when you're first using this camera, if you're brand new to photography, even brand new to this camera itself, automatic is probably what you're going to start on so you can get nice and comfortable with this camera. You'll find that with auto, it generally does a really good job, but there are some times where you go, ah, I wish it didn't do this, I really wanted to do this. When automatic, you have no control over what the camera does. It's gonna do what it's going to do versus if you are in P mode, your program mode, this is going to allow you to use features like auto where the camera picks all those settings for you, but you can ch change certain things like your autofocus area, autofocus mode, you can change your shutter speed or aperture depending on the situation. And then the camera kind of figures everything else out to meet what you changed. So the picture still comes out very similar to auto. It's, a, it's essentially going to be your assistant if you consider that. And it's gonna be a great learning tool if once you wanna get off of automatic. TV mode is gonna be your time value. This is going to control your speed, how fast it takes the picture. If you want to freeze movement or show movement in your image. You have your AV mode, which is gonna be your aperture variable mode. This is going to be controlling the opening in the lens, uh, which of course this will vary from lens to lens depending on its ability. Uh, but essentially the bigger you open up that aperture, very similar to the iris of your eye, if you consider it that way, uh, the more depth of field you get, which is blurry background, sharp foreground options or sharpness throughout. And it also lets in more light or blocks out more light. It, it controls the light intake, um, if you consider that. So you have speed, you have light intake, and then you have M for full manual. Anybody that's purchasing a Rebel, I don't expect you to jump into manual you know, anytime soon or at all. You know, Don't feel that you have to be shooting on manual. Don't let anyone tell you you have to be shooting on manual in order to be a photographer, because you don't. 
you know, start where you're comfortable, don't get overwhelmed and learn step by step. You'll be much happier and you'll enjoy your camera much more, believe me. Now, when it comes to P, T, V and A, V, I do have videos going over those modes in more detail for you if you'd like to check those out. Again, those are in my camera basics playlist that I will have in the description below. The next mode here is going to be your creative filters mode. So what you would do is you would choose your filter, which you have greeny, black and white, soft focus, fisheye effect, water paint, watercolor painting, toy camera, miniature, HDR, different HDRs. So you just have just general effects that you can play with, just fun stuff. So that's kind of neat. And then the next one here, your SCN mode, is gonna be very similar to your automatic mode. It's your scene mode. This is going to be automatic, but it's going to allow you to tell the camera, hey, you can take choose the settings. It's all yours, but just so you know, I'm taking a picture of a person, or I'm taking pictures of a group of people, or a landscape, or I'm taking a close-up picture, sports, kids, food, night portraits. I mean, you've got, you know, quite a bit on here. So you, the camera will limit itself going, okay, I know to look for people rather than landscapes, that type of thing. So it allows you to be a little bit more specific than it, you would allow the auto mode to just get a general understanding. But again, very similar to the automatic, you don't have any control other than telling it what you're taking a picture of on where it's focusing, how it's focusing, its sensitivity to light, any of that. For the rest of the video, we're gonna go and stick in our P mode. That way we can go over our shortcut buttons and all the options in the menu because on automatic, it does limit you to what you can change. So here on the first shortcut button here with the box with the three little boxes and the arrow inside, if we hit that and go to our screen, that's gonna be our autofocus area. That's where the camera is autofocusing. You'll see here that it's automatically selected on auto selection autofocus. This is gonna be the only option in auto. This is going to consider the entire screen and is going to front focus on whatever it determines is in the front. So if you're trying to take a picture of say, a fox behind long grass, it's going to grab onto the long grass every time versus you can tell it to be more specific. So you can tell it to be more of a large zone. So center, left or right. You can go uh, manual selection, which makes it even more specific than the zone does or a single point, which can be really helpful, especially if you're getting really close to something, doing close up photography, and you wanna pick out a specific detail. And on the second button here, you have your ISO. This is your sensitivity to light. If we push this button, this button comes up. I would recommend keeping it on automatic, but also setting the limit to say 6,400. So while your camera can go up to 25,600, the bigger the ISO number, the fuzzier your pictures will actually be. So you always wanna try and strive for a low number, but because this affects how fast the camera takes a picture, if say you're taking a picture in low light, you need that number to go up higher. So we're just limiting it to how high it'll go to avoid any super fuzzy images. Then you have your display button, which is going to change the display on the back of the camera here. So the more you hit it, it looks like right now it's just kind of turning the screen off or turning it on. Going to the bottom of the camera here, you can see that we do have a battery door, which is gonna have a little lever here that will allow it to pop on out. It also has your universal tripod mount here as well, which will go onto the top of any tripod with a plate, of course. Now to the back of the camera. Here we have a little wheel that's by our viewfinder where we look through to capture our pictures. Uh, this is going to essentially be very similar to like you going to the eye doctor where they put different slides in front of you and you see one's blurry, one's, one's clear. This is going to adjust that diopter back and forth. So if you're the type of person to wear glasses or contacts, uh, you may be able to adjust this specifically to your eyesight, which is really nice. So a lot of people don't even have to shoot with glasses with this. We've already gone over this button here in the video mode, it is record and stop recording. In the picture taking mode is your live view mode. So you can use the touch screen and ability to see on the screen itself. 
You have your auto focus on button so you can actually focus with this back button here. You have, again, another shortcut to your autofocus area. This one here, I believe, is going to be your auto exposure lock. Uh, we have our quick menu here, which will allow us to quickly change things on the screen. Personally, so as you can see here, this is a very basic, easy to read screen. Great for somebody that may be overwhelmed with all of the general settings that there are. So in the P mode, you can control your drive mode, your single or continuous uh, shooting or your self timer. You can do your uh, focus position. So again, this button or the button on top, and then you can choose your autofocus um, mode as well here. So one shot is going to be for someone that's not moving, that's posing for you, a still life, a landscape. AI servo is gonna be for somebody that's moving, so it's looking for movement, animals, uh, kids, you know, just general movement. And then you have your AI focus, which is going to let the camera determine if it is still or moving. Uh, so depending on the situation, I would choose one shot or AI servo, but if you're just walking around, you don't know what you're gonna come across, AI focus is a great one to keep it in as well. Then you can also change your exposure, the brightness or darkness of the photo. So if you go plus numbers, it's gonna make it brighter. If you go minus, it's gonna make it darker. Now, you may see that say in TV, your options are going to change. It's going to allow you to change your shutter speed here, plus the brightness, your drive mode, your focus position, and how it focuses. In the AV mode, it's going to allow you to affect your depth of field, the blur versus the sharp, brightness, drive mode, focus area, focus mode, versus manual exposure, it's gonna give you all of the options here. It's gonna give you your shutter speed, it's gonna give you your aperture, it's gonna give you your ISO, it's gonna give you your drive mode, your area, your how it focuses. Uh, of course, at the bottom of all of these, you'll see the battery level, you'll see if the Wi-Fi or Bluetooth is on, you'll see what quality you're taking pictures of, JPEG or RAW, I have it on RAW currently, and in the brackets here is how many pictures you have left. If we go, let's see, I'm gonna put it back to P for now, and we go into the menu. The very last tab here, you're gonna see that you have the guided, which is what it's on out of the box, or you have the standard, which is what every other Canon is on. So if we switch this over to standard, and we go back here, which by the way, your universal escape button is always gonna be your shutter button halfway down. Now we have this um, more laid out version of the quick menu. So if you push this or this, it's going to allow you to change all these settings, anywhere from that brightness and darkness we talked about, the ISO, your Wi-Fi settings. This one here is going to be your image effects, so how it displays color, uh, vivid color, natural color, standard color. I would just keep it on auto generally. You have your white balance options, uh, which you can also get by pushing up on this um, directional pad here, WB. This is going to affect the temperature of the photo, warmer or cooler. Different HDR settings, you have, again, your autofocus mode, how it's focusing, where it's focusing. You have your metering mode, which you don't have in your guided mode either. This is gonna control where it's taking the light from, where it's considering is the most important part of the picture. On automatic and your guided modes, most likely, you're gonna have it on evaluative metering, which is considering the entire image and finding a balance for it. The next one is gonna be partial metering. It's considering a general area, kind of like zone. You have spot metering, which is gonna consider the center of the photo and a very specific spot. And you can lock that in with your auto exposure lock here and recompose if you didn't want it directly in the center. And then you just kind of have a general center weighted average. Uh, so depending on what you want to do, you may want to change that. Generally, I like to keep it on center weighted or spot, but that's just me. Then here we have your drive mode to be single shooting, continuous shooting, and your timers and your image quality, of course, raw, JPEG, or both. So you see that off the guided mode, you actually have a lot more options, but go there in due time. You can also see here that on our directional pad, if we push to the left, you'll get the drive mode as well. 
If you push to the right, you get our autofocus mode. If you push down, that's when you get that, you know, that those color options, the automatic, the standard, the portrait, the vivid color, the monochrome, those type of things. But generally I would keep it in auto. Then you have your play button here, which I don't have any pictures taken on this card. So nothing will, sh nothing will show. But if I wanted to, I could go ahead and go backward and forward to take or to look at my pictures. You can also use the wheel here to scroll through as well. If I want to throw any away, I just have to use the trash can. Then we have our info button, which does change the display of the screen. Here we have a level, and then we have just our general information or off. Now, if we go into the menu, I'm not gonna go over both menu settings because they really are the same. So if we see here, if it, on guided, and you see we have our tabs up at the top here. We have our shooting settings, our playback settings, our wireless settings, and our function settings. If I go into the shooting settings here, you can see that it still has five pages, but the screen is white versus if I go into say the standard and we go back here, which you can choose differently for your shooting mode or your menu mode. So now you can see up at the top we have it's more, it has a black backdrop versus a white one, still has the five pages. So it's still gonna give you the same options there. The only big difference between the two menus is this last tab here, which is the My Menu tab. The My Menu tab allows you to take any of these options and these other four tabs that you have to kind of dig through if they're not available on the outside of your camera and you can set them to this one tab so you don't have to dig through them each time you can just go to one tab and know exactly where it is which is kind of neat so it's up to your preference how you want to do this the great thing about these cameras is they're highly customizable which is also kind of a con so keep that in mind so i'm just going to go over this menu here, considering that they are both the same other than this last tab. So here we go, we have the uh, image quality. Again, you can get that through your quick menu. You'll find that a lot of these you can get on the outside of your camera or through the quick menu option. So you'll find that I might skip over quite a bit of this. I also might skip over some that aren't going to reach as many people as you would think. It may just overcomplicate things. So if you do have any questions beyond what I go over in the menu, please leave me a question below and I'll be sure to get to you. I also plan on going over these menus in a higher detail, really spending time on each and every single subject. Um, if you want to check out that video separately, that video is coming. It is not posted yet. Uh, so again, we have image quality that's in the quick menu. You have your still image uh, aspect ratio Four three or two, three is going to be very common. 16 by nine is going to be kind of a wide screen look. It's up to you what you want to do. Your review duration, uh, which is going to tell you uh, how long the picture will pop up for after you take it. Two seconds is pretty standard. Release shutter without card. Personally, I have this off because I constantly forget to put a card in the camera. So it's nice because it won't let me take pictures without one, uh, which, it, which will give me a red flag right there that I need to go grab a card. You have lens aberration correction. You have flash control. You have your exposure comp, which again, you can get through your quick menu. Your ISO speed settings, again, you can get that through your quick menu or up on the top here through your shortcut button. You have auto lighting optimizer, highlighting tone priority. These I would just leave alone. Your metering mode, again, you can get that through your quick menu, but only on the standard layout, not the guided. You have your white balance. Again, you can push up on the directional pad here or through the quick menu in the standard mode, not the guided mode. Custom white balance, if you needed to set that, say you're working in a studio with very specific color casting or lighting, you have your white balance shift, color space, you de definitely wanna keep that in sRGB. Picture style, again, that's gonna be how it displays the color, automatic, standard, vivid, monochrome, however you wanna choose. Long exposure noise reduction, up to you if you wanna have that on or off. Personally, if I'm doing long exposure, I'm generally doing it in raw, I like to spend more time on it in editing. Um, then having the camera try and do that for me. High ISO speed noise reduction, I'll just keep that in the middle, should be fine. Uh, dust delete data, obtain data for removing dust if it, deter if it detects that there's any there. Live view shooting, 
um, which is going to be this button here. You can enable it or disable it. Anti-flicker shooting if you're shooting in fluorescence. Lens electronic manual focus, uh, which I wouldn't bother with that at the moment. Autofocus assist beam firing, which is going to be uh, this light right up here. It'll shine a light out to help it focus, whether it due to be lack of light or lack of detail. And then if you hit the right button again, it just goes right into the next tab, which is really nice. So this is our playback menu tab. This is going to refer to all the pictures that we've already taken. So you can protect images, rotate images, erase images, set up a photo book, do a slideshow, do red eye correction, creative filters, cropping, resizing, rating, you know, any of those. Um, so you probably won't find yourself in this menu very often. Then we have our wireless tab, which allows you to connect to your cellular device or iPad uh, through wireless or Bluetooth to be able to connect to the Canon utility app, transfer images, use your phone as a remote control for the camera wirelessly so you don't have to use the cable tether if you do not wish to. If you're not planning on using that anytime soon, I would just generally keep the airplane mode on. Uh, in other cameras, this has been a way to save the battery just a little bit. So I don't know if that's a factor in this model, but I always like to do it just in case. You can also clear the wireless settings. Next one here is going to be our general setup menu. So you have selecting a folder, file numbering, I would keep that on continuous. Uh, you have auto rotate. If you take a vertical picture, it'll automatically rotate it for you. Formatting your card. This is something I like to go over in every video because a lot of people do not realize what formatting your card is. When it comes to formatting your card, what that does is it permanently erases everything off your card. I want to make sure that that is fully understandable that when you format your card, it permanently erases everything on there. Now there's a chance you may be able to get those pictures back through a recovery program, but there are no promises. The reason you would want to format your card is it because it resets your card nice and clean the way you purchased it. When you just use your trash can button, it essentially recycles your pictures. When you use the trash can, it deletes the visible file but keeps the data there, making it more likely for you to be, be able to recover that photo in a recovery program. But if you just use delete or delete all on your computer each time, it's just going to allow you to write over that data over and over and over again. That can cause corruption. That can cause you the card to lock you out of your pictures. It can just stop working versus if you format your card it is less likely for that to happen because it's you're getting a refreshed card each time and you have auto power off. Uh, if you would like it to save, save some battery there display brightness, screen um, off and on button, date time, your date and time zone, the language, video system, touch control, beep if you would like it to beep when it focuses and enable or disable that. Sensor cleaning, you know, I typically wouldn't do that on your own. I would take that to a professional to do. Um, but if you guys have any questions on that, let me know. You have your viewfinder display here, the info button, uh, the different switches, HDMI resolution, multi-function lock. You have your custom buttons, so you can actually set uh, your buttons to do different things if you would like. Again, highly customizable. You can clear your settings, uh, so kind of reset all of these in case you have any issues where your camera is doing something funny now that you've been playing with your camera. Your copyright information, certification logo, all of that. You also have your firmware to check what your firmware is to see if it needs to be updated. And then we're back to if you wanted your menu in your shooting screen to be back in guided mode. Other than that, that pretty much sums up the Canon T8i. If you guys have any questions that I did not answer, please let me know in the comments below. If you would like to see a lens comparison for the Canon, uh, whether it be comparing it to a Tamron, a Sigma, whatever it is, you know, definitely hit me up. I'll be sure to add that to my list. And until next time, keep your eye for inspiration, Shutterbugs. Bye.